Hey, this is Phil. I'm over here at the can basket in Pillion. And just to let you know what we're doing out here is we're collecting aluminum cans and recycling them. They, we sell them. And uh, the recycler gives a check. Uh, we, we get the check, but the check is actually made out to Mission Lexington, which is a, uh, an organization that helps people who are struggling in life. Uh, we Maybe we should, uh, the first check is $242. Maybe we should have a goal for $3,000 this year to help somebody in need. We currently only have a way to recycle aluminum cans. We don't have a way to recycle uh, a glass bottle. So if you have a choice to buy your beverage in a in an aluminum can, uh, we would appreciate you do that. So yep, thank you in advance for your strong support. Hey everyone, it's Melinda, and um, here's an update from sales. Back in Jan uh, February, Gary and I flew to Boston to meet with the. Uh, BJ Buyers, and we wanted to reintroduce the saute kits with them to show them the new um, the new film for the bags. And also, we took the color dip for them to sample as well. But uh, starting in July, they will add the sweet and tangy saute kit to uh, their commodity list and also um, Pass along the collar dip to the buyer that would be handling that commodity as well. So overall, it was a good visit. Um, next update is, and this one, I'm excited about this one, the collar dip. I uh, sent samples in to uh, Food Lion, and wow, they loved the collar dip. The buyers, the category managers absolutely loved the dip. So they will all get together and uh, look at uh, doing a reset so they can include the collar dip on their shelf. So they will be back in touch um, and let me know how soon they can get that on their shelf. So I'm really excited about that because I think the collar dip is, is great and it will be um, a great item for us as well as the customers. So I'll keep you posted on that. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Hey everybody, this is Forrest Burkett with the Harvesting Department. Today I wanted to talk to y'all about a new program that we're um, doing for Clemson. This is the Climate Smart Program, and I'm standing here in field P13. Just want to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be doing here. So we've got rye that we've planted um, back at the end of last year, and it's now grown. It's about six to eight inches tall. We're going to wait and let that get almost to maturity and then we will terminate this and we will plant uh we'll, we're going to kind of till it up a little bit and then we will plant directly into it with uh collards so we'll plant the collards and then we will have a hay residual in between the rows so we're going to spread some hay in between it and really the main importance of climate smart is to reduce our carbon footprint so we're really trying to do that and working with Clemson closely and our farm here to make our carbon footprint as minimal as we can. So they're gonna collect data off this field and we'll get some results at the end of the year. So we'll keep you updated, do another video later on when we start to terminate and cultivate in here and then um, plant our collards. So thank you all. We hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. Good morning, how you guys doing? Uh, my name is Nicholas Harrison, I'm a first shift production supervisor. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, the saute kits that we are now making. Uh, so we have now transitioned over from the boxes. Uh, we have three different uh, flavors that we do. The sweet and tangy, the Moroccan style, and we do the tangy. Uh, so this was the beginning started using the boxes. So we have now transitioned over to the bag, which is, I think is more convenient. Uh, so once again, we have the Italian, we have the sweet and tangy, and we have the Moroccan style. So with the Moroccan style, we have three kits, uh, three component kits that go to the bag along with the collar. Sweet and tangy, we also have three components that go inside the bag um, as well, along with the columns. Seven ounce columns. And the Italian has four components. It has an 
a couple of different pasta that go with the kit with the seven ounce shredded cotton. But yeah, I think in my opinion it's more convenient. Uh, you can find them at your local Walmart and select stores. Uh, give us a try and let you know. Let us know what you think about it. Thanks. Hello everyone, this is Brian Neely in Transportation. Today in this episode of Take 5, we're going to be talking about how we get our orders over from Famous over to McLeod. We're going to create a manifest, and then we're going to show examples of how we dispatch our orders over to our drivers for delivery to our customers. Here is a look at our partial shipments filter. As you see, our driver managers have different areas of the country that we are responsible for. I do the Midwest and West, therefore I have my filters set up for those states. Jim Kennedy, who does the Northeast, he may have his filters set up for just the Northeast states. And Amber Rawl, who does regional in Florida, may have her filters set up just for South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida. Now we have our filter set. Here is a view of our order shipping on this particular day. Once we have built our orders together, each load is assigned a manifest number, or as we call it, M number, as you can see here on the left column. As you can see here, we have drilled down to look at each stop for this manifest. If you noticed, it will show the distance between each stop. This is a good tool for the driver manager to see if the route is feasible or not. And if not, we can may adjust an appointment if needed with the help from our sales team. This is also when orders can fall out when change is hit and famous. This is why we tell sales okay to hit change or not okay to hit change when adjusting an appointment. A good rule of thumb is okay to hit change if it's not the day of dispatch. And remember, the day of dispatch for weekend loads is on Friday. Therefore, if change is hit on Friday for an order shipping Sunday, the order will fall out and may cause the driver not to get all the stop information. Here is a view of our shipping list. So once all of our manifests are built by each driver manager, Edward Hellex will then build by hand in Excel the shipping list. A few years ago, we had a program called FMS which would import the shipping list into Excel. But we found out later that FMS was not very cost effective. Therefore, Edward volunteered to do this by hand each and every day. So shout out to Edward for taking on this responsibility. Next is a view of our dispatch board. Dispatch will verbally talk to each driver, give them their route assignment with stop locations and delivery times. Once each driver has been spoken to, the dispatcher will then email the load assignment to the driver and initial and date each load. Pink means the driver has not been spoken to yet. Orange means the driver has been sent their assignment via email or by z it to the truck's power fleet unit. And green means the driver has acknowledged they have received the load. Here is an example of an email the driver will receive from dispatch with each destination and delivery appointment time. Here is a map from PC Miler for the load we just emailed to the driver showing each stop. This is helpful in seeing the route and eliminating outer route miles and cross routes. Finally, after the driver has been dispatched and started to deliver their load, you can view this movement screen to see how the progress is going. This will show you the in and out times for each stop and an ETA for the next stop. In this example, the first three stops have delivered and the final stop has an ETA of 2.51 a.m. for a 3 a.m. appointment in Dwight, Illinois. Thank you and I hope everyone has a safe weekend.